Beowulf, fit 38, in modern English. Then I was told, after these words, the son of Weohstan quickly obeyed his wounded lord, maimed in fight, and went in his linked armor, his woven coat of mail, under the barrow's vault. There, proud in triumph, the brave young retainer beheld, when he went by the seat, many a costly ornament, glittering gold lying on the ground, marbles on the wall, and the lair of the serpent, the ancient creature who flew by twilight, drinking cups standing, vessels of bygone races, unpolished and deprived of their ornaments. There was many a helmet, old and rusty, many an armlet, twisted with cunning. Treasure, gold in the earth, may easily get the better of any man, conceal it who will. Moreover, he saw, hanging high above the hoard, a standard all of gold, greatest of marbles, wrought by hand, woven by human skill. From this a light shone forth, so that he could discern the surface of the ground and scrutinize the treasures. There was no vestige of the serpent, for the sword had destroyed him. Thus I learnt how in the caverned hill one man rifled the hoard, the old-time work of giants, and at his own will laid in his bosom drinking cups and dishes. He took also the standard, brightest of banners. The sword of the aged prince, its blade was iron, had before that wounded him who had long been protector of the treasures, who had for the hoard put forth his burning terror of flame, at midnight fiercely welling out, till by a violent death he died. The messenger hastened, eager for return, impelled by the treasures. Anxiety tortured him as to whether he, the brave-minded one, would find the Yert's lord alive in the open place where he had left him, shorn of his strength, erewhile. At last he, bearing the treasures, found the famous prince, his lord, bleeding and at the end of life. Once more he began to sprinkle him with water, until the beginning of a speech broke forth from the storehouse of his mind. In sorrow the warrior king spoke and looked upon the gold. I utter in words my thanks to the ruler of all, the king of glory, the everlasting Lord, for the treasures which I here gaze upon, in that I have been allowed to win such things for my people before my day of death. Now that I have given my old life in barter for the hoard of treasure, do ye henceforth supply the people's needs. I may stay here no longer. Bid the war veterans raise a splendid barrow after the funeral fire on a projection by the sea which shall tower high on Hronesness as a memorial for my people so that seafarers who urge their tall ships from afar over the spray of ocean shall thereafter call it Beowulf's Barrow. The brave-souled prince undid from off his neck the golden collar, gave it to the thane, the young spear-warrior, and his gold-mounted helmet, ring, and corslet, bade him use them well. Thou art the last of our race, the Wymundings. Fate has swept off all my kinsfolk, undaunted nobles, to their doom. I must go after them. That was the veteran's last expression of his spirit's thoughts before the funeral pyre was his lot, the hot, destructive flames. His soul departed from his body to journey to the doom of righteous men. <laughs>